Hey everybody, it's Josh Dorkin from BiggerPockets.com here with the man, the myth, the legend, the rehabbing god himself, Tom Tarrant. What's up, Tom? How's it going, Josh? I'm happy to be here. Thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to have you, man. I, I know I'm blowing you up a little bit, but you know, I feel like we've known each other for a couple of years online, and, and uh, you know, I know you're definitely making it happen, so I want to give you some props. Oh man, I sure appreciate it, and I uh, I've enjoyed networking with you for the last couple of years too. So it goes both ways. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, so for for those people who want to know before we get started, uh, Tom is uh, can be found on Bigger Pockets at biggerpockets.com/users/tom underscore Tarrant T A R R A N T, and uh, Tom's website is tomtarrant.com, spelled the same way, obviously. Uh, so Tom, what's up, man? You're uh, you're, you're the rehabbing man, huh? Man, I tell you, um, we are just freshly back in sunny San Diego, California, after about a five-week uh, rehab tour in Texas. So we're glad to be back in California in our hometown of San Diego, and um, we're about six weeks into our newest project. So it's exciting. Oh, that's fantastic. So, how did you guys get started? And and uh, you guys, I'm assuming you guys means you and and your wife, yeah? Or is that you know, my wife plays a big part in it. She uh, initially built our first website and really got me into the blogging thing. And um, she handles a lot of the back end stuff with uh, you know the company business and, and the financials and stuff. So yeah, she's a she's a big part of what we do here. But it's a small shop, you know. It's me and a bunch of subcontractors, really. Okay. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us about the company? How you got started? What kind of got you on this whole real estate kick? You know, what what'd you do prior? Okay, I tell you. Um, well, I got my real estate license when I was 18 years old, so uh, I've been around it and I've been exposed to it um, all my life. Okay. And um, I probably flipped my first house in 2004 when I actually had a nine to five desk job. I was actually in sales and marketing in the okay. action sports industry for a skateboard company. Oh, cool. And um, on the side, evenings and weekends, I flipped my first property, and that was 2004. Um, and did killer on it and knew that this was for me and so I just uh, went out went on the web and tried to acquire as much information as I possibly could right. and um, you know that's where all the forums kinda came into play and whatever but uh, that's kinda how I got started um, oh, I've nice. always been around tools all my life and so the construction side of things always kinda came easy for me gotcha gotcha so 2004 were you, you were in San Diego at the time? Yeah, I was in San Diego at the time, okay. and uh, like I said, I had a desk job, so I was rushing over after work and spending the weekends and doing this rehab and uh, right. absolutely hit it out of the park, so I was just like, hey, man, this is where I want to be, yeah. the freedom of being self-employed. Yeah, that's great. So how, how long was it before you went from employee to self-employed? 2006, I left my, my job. Okay. So I went self-employed in 2006. So okay. we're going on, I guess, five years now that um, we haven't worked for the man. The man. Now man. you are the man, right? No, 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 no. It's, it's, <laughs> I tell you, it's funny being on the web. You know, people, they imagine you as being bigger or that it's a bigger thing than it really is. But yeah. when you really get right down to it, it's a small thing. It's easy. You know, I, I like to say anybody could do it with a little bit of knowledge and information, and the information's out there. People just have to go and get it. You know, educate absolutely. themselves. Absolutely, absolutely, cool. So, so you're making a living. You know, there's a couple things I want I want to cover with you in this in this interview. Um, definitely want to talk about some rehabbing stuff. Um, also want to talk about web. Um, you're you're one of the guys that I point people to as somebody that they should check out. Um, I think I think you're doing it right. I think your online presence is is great, um, particularly your blog. And so why don't we start with that? Um, you you've got this blog tomtarrant.com that mm -hmm. you use. I'm gonna plug you the whole time tomtarrant.com tomtarrant.com tomtarrant.com. Okay. Right? Hey, I'll just do my work for me. I don't have to say it anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, no, but so you use this blog um, to to talk about your deals and 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 I do. you know what I tell people is. There's this guy Tom who's and and there's a bunch of other guys like you who who do the same thing, and I think it's really powerful what you guys are doing, um, not only for yourself because I think it keeps you somewhat accountable to your own deals and and things like that, but I think it also builds a lot of credibility for you and your business. Um, so wanted to ask about that. How'd you how'd you decide that you were going to start blogging about each of your deals? Um, what what do you put into it, and and what has the uh, end result of this blog been? You know, is it is it helping you with your business? Is it actually helping with your credibility, which I believe it is, um, okay. and so on. A lot of questions. 
Yeah. Go for it. Uh, <clears throat> originally, we had actually set the blog up to share our adventures in Texas with everyone back home and our families and stuff. And um, my wife has a background in SEO. And for those of you guys that don't know, it's uh, search engine optimization. And yeah. so she's um, you know, a web person. And she built our first website. It wasn't a blog at the time from scratch. And um, you know, it, it became, we started getting a few followers and we were sharing information. And it was really just sort of my idea to share what we were doing for others because right. it's how I learned. I got information off the web and I thought, this is cool. Let's just share. People might enjoy seeing what we're doing actually every day. Right. And um, sharing more of the details about the rehab, not so much how to rehab or how to buy a deal or how to, you know, figure out the, the comps or target an ARV or anything like that, but right. more like watching the renovation process because, you know, we saw the home shows on TV being so popular right. Um, right. that we thought that if we really shared what we're doing to these houses, people would find it interesting. So that's how it all got started, you know, and it was a homemade website, but we would do weekly updates and just sort of show what we were doing with the renovations. Um, as time progressed, we switched it over to a WordPress template right. um, because the blogs became more and more popular and we were sort of running our site as a blog, although it wasn't a blog template. Sure, so we sure. said, hey, this is going to be easier. At the time, my wife was having her new baby. Um, so it wasn't. we didn't have as much time for her to help me with the updates. So right. we right. found it easier to switch everything over to WordPress and that way I could do the updates myself without sort of bothering her. Um, so that's kind of how it all got started. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what about like the credibility and, and the following that you've now developed? Um, you know, you yeah, and I talked briefly. We probably currently get about uh, anywhere from 250 to 300 unique um, visitors a day. Okay. So the traffic has, has built, but it's been a slow deal. It started slow. Right. It was always fun to watch to um, sort of reverse lurking to see who's looking at your site. Right. You can put a stat counter on there and you can see from what cities. I mean, and people all over the world send us comments. And, um, you know, we just like sharing. It comes down to sharing what you're doing. And yeah. it comes back to getting the feedback and the comments that we get. And a lot of people are asking questions, you know, like, how did you do this? Or why did you do this? Or can you help me with this? And right. I just really enjoy teaching and helping other people. So um, it has helped. And um, it's not monetized. We don't necessarily make money off of the site. You won't ever see banner ads or uh, <clears throat> Google AdWords right. or anything popping up or flashing on the screen. Click here and enter your email address. It's not about that. It's just about the content, I think, yeah. um, and helping other people. That's really it. It was just helping other people and sharing what we do. All right. And so, you know, clearly you're, you're doing well. You're getting some good traffic with the site. Um, how about business? Are you actually uh, are you getting any business? Are you are you meeting people, partnering up with any folks through your site? Yeah, you know that's a great question, um, Joshua. Um, we met some really cool people in Texas and um, San Antonio. We had wholesalers and other um, investors coming out of the woodwork sure. and met several people. We even coached people okay. and did deals with people, wholesale deals, and people would bring us deals that they were unable to fund. So gotcha. it, um, no, it really has paid off. Um, we have one tab on the on the blog that's a We Buy Houses. So okay. we've tried to direct a lot of the, the We Buy Houses traffic to our site, to the yeah. one page. So no, we've bought properties off the site. So it has it has paid, you know, it has put money in our in our pockets having the site. Yeah. And another thing we found interesting is in sharing all of the rehab work, um, we really kind of built up a little following there in San Antonio while we were there. And we were known kind of for doing higher end stuff, specialty projects. We did a lot of um, 1920s um, historic craftsman bungalows. Oh, cool. Okay. And so we had kind of a following within that community, and um, people really enjoyed seeing um, at what great lengths we went to preserve the historic part of the house yeah. while still updating the interior. And um, you know, it's funny is that just about every one of our our home buyers that ended up buying our properties from us, retail buyers, I mean, um, they ended up finding the blog before the clo the sale even closed. Because you know, right. people will Google you these yeah. days, and find your stuff. So knowing that, the credibility I think that we had on the blog, because it's really all about how to do things right, and right. look, we went this extra mile to sort of do this and make it really cool. Right. And I think that the passion that we have for creating these cool old projects really comes through. So it actually helped us in the past by having people find our blog by accident and, and, and seeing the house that they're purchasing getting rehabbed. Oh, so that's great. It's been pretty cool. Yeah, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, yeah. I tell you, man, I mean, you know, I really, really am on a kick. You know, I'm really trying to help uh, investors understand that 
it's really important to be out there and blogging, you know? Oh gosh. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm sure, all social networking. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I'm sure you would, you, you know, you don't care if there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people doing the exact same thing because they're all adding value and they're helping to educate other people who, who might be doing this, um, improving neighborhoods, improving communities and, and obviously improving their bottom line at the same time. Yeah, no, that's a great thing because I had uh, a couple of people told me off the bat, like, Tom, why are you putting all this on the in on the internet? Right, um, right. You even give some of your tips about how you're driving around and yeah. you're showing your letters that you're mailing to these homeowners. Like, aren't you going to create too much competition for yourself? And, right. and it's just really the opposite, you know? Yeah. It's like what they say, uh, rising tide floats all boats. Like, there's so much info on the web and um, if I can help other people, it, it all comes back around. I'm sort of paying it forward in my mind because that's where I learned most of my stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. That's great. So, get out there, right? Get out there, be blogging. You know, yeah, talk yeah. about what you're doing. Be visible. Don't worry about your competition, because the more yeah. well known you are, the better. You know, the better for you and your business ultimately. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh no, and there's tons of houses. There's yeah. never a shortage of houses, and there never will be. Um, right. And Facebook is huge too. Networking on Facebook with the people in your town and the other investors. Um, I've got a great group, you know, that I'm I'm networking with, and everybody's sharing what they're doing, and it's great. And you get motivated by seeing someone else's successes too. I yeah. think. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. All right, man. So we talked about some tech. Now let's let's get into the nitty gritty, the way you make some money, uh, <laughs> which is 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 rehabbing these houses. Um, you had said, you, you know, your bread and butter for a minute there was those 1920s. Um, let, let's let's talk about um, your criteria. What what's your what's your selection criteria for a house? You know, you see, uh, you know, 50 houses, 100 houses, somebody people send you deals, people pitch to crap to you. You know, at what point is it like, oh, this is my this is what I'm looking for. What's the okay, point? Yeah, that's for? a great question too. Um, some weeks we'll look at probably 20 properties. Um, when we're really on the hunt, we'll see more. Okay. And people are pitching us stuff all all the time, but not every deal that I may do or we may get um, fits the criteria for one of these killer rehabs that you see on the on our site. Okay. So what we're looking for on the site are houses that have functional obsolescence of some sort. Um, generally, they're the small bungalows, like the two bedroom, one baths, but in a, a up and coming kind of urban redevelopment neighborhood. That's been our specialty. So we go near downtown in sort of the transitional neighborhoods, and we look for the the, the homes that are too small, really, for a growing family that fits the you know the average uh, home retail home buyer out there wants a three bedroom, two bath, whatever. Gotcha. But in a lot of these older neighborhoods, they're little two ones. So we'll go through and we'll sort of pick out those and. We like to find the properties that are generally not livable because for us that means there's more of a profit potential sure. because a retail buyer is not then our competition when we go to make an offer. Gotcha. Um, so if it's not livable, that's key for us too. Um, a lot of our recent success has become uh, has been from adding square footage to these bungalows. So gotcha. we'll look for the little bungalows. No one can deal with a 2-1. Right. The construction background that I have, um, I can add square footage to the property, and I can usually um, add square footage for around sixty dollars a square foot. Whereas right. in these neighborhoods in San Antonio, for instance, they were selling for one hundred and seventy-five bucks a square foot. Here in San Diego, you're talking two to three hundred right. bucks a square foot. So we were sort of building in our margin by, by making the home bigger, and so we're adding value to the house. Really, we're forcing it. I always say forcing appreciation. We're gotcha. forcing it to appreciate. Absolutely. We're not going in and putting the latest granite, pergo, and um, stainless steel finishes on right. these things and just juicing a little margin. We're adding some serious value. We're pushing it to a serious another level, and, um, and and that's it. We're, we're really getting paid probably half for our investing skills right. and half for our construction skills. Okay, so so you know, I'd say the vast majority of rehabbers are are going the other path, right? They're they're sure, all yeah. We're definitely definitely different than most guys out there. And in, here in San Diego right now, the foreclosures are everywhere. Yeah. So there's a huge opportunity to go in and just jump in and do cabinets, some yeah. paint, some countertops, some tile, and right. jump right back out. Yeah. But you have to do multiple projects at a time. Right. You have to have a lot of financing behind you, or borrow the hard money, which gets expensive. Mm -hmm. It can be three points and thirteen percent commonly. Um, so it, it's a lot, uh, I think, larger of a risk than doing what we're doing. Right. Whereas for me, on these big deals, we'll do two, maybe three a year. Yeah. Um, but you're looking at uh, a lot uh, larger uh, 
profit center. Right, right. We're also looking at, you know, of course, less risk for us because we don't have to have as much as our, our personal finances tied up. Sure. So now tell me, you're, you're, you're going $60 per square foot, you're saying is your average. Um, cost to renovate, yeah. Cost to renovate. Is yeah. that is that number something that somebody like me, I can go out and, and, and find somebody to, to renovate at that rate or is that because you've got the extra skill set? I think that really is because we have the extra skill set. Yeah, I was talking to a builder here today in town, 30 years, general contractor, born and raised in yeah. San Diego, and he came by and was amazed at the prices we're getting. But yeah. it all comes down to really negotiating with the contractors right. and finding the right subcontractors. Um, when I say contractors, I want to be very specific. Okay. We don't hire a general contractor to take on our projects. I act as the general contractor gotcha. being the homeowner. You can pull an owner builder permit yep. and act as the general contractor and then you just oversee it, you sort of project manage it and you hire the subs for each category that you need. Yeah. And if you really break it down, it's a real simple process. You just have to learn the order to do things in yeah. and what to kind of watch for and how to make it how to make it go smooth. All right, so let's cover this stuff because I'm I, I'm honestly I'm having a hell of a time right now I'm trying <laughs> to get a back patio done. It's a concrete <laughs> patio. I'm having I'm having troubles. You know, I've gone through I've literally had I'd say almost a dozen contractors come through. Half of those have submitted an actual bid. The other half haven't given me anything. You know, mm -hmm. and so, how does somebody go about finding a good contractor? I know I could use the help. I'm sure most rehabbers can use the help. I know it's really hard to find somebody good, and when you find them, you hold on tight. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, my wife and I were talking about it. it. And if somebody asks you for them, yeah. hey, who's your contractor? It's almost like it's your babysitter. Yeah, yeah. Don't dare give your babysitter out because next Friday rolls around, and guess what? She's busy, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so what's, no, what's yeah, the secret? Yeah, that's a killer question, Josh. And I got to tell you, I'll give you some answers how I do it. Yeah. That I would suggest other people do it this way. Yeah. Since I know what to look for and sure. I know how to do the build, then I can sort of watch the guys as they do it and know right. if I'm in bed with the right person or not. So I'm all about price. And one of my best ways has been Home Depot parking lot. So I'll go to, as I'm at Home Depot parking lot in a new town, yeah. you know, we went to San Antonio and didn't know one person. Right. I went into Home Depot parking lot and started asking for numbers, you know, and I know what to ask them so I can sort of tell if they know what they're doing or not. Okay. But I wouldn't tell a homeowner or someone getting started in the business necessarily to use this method. It might sure. not be the best idea. Right. But if you go the Yellow Pages route, you're going to end up paying too much and you won't make any profit. Right. So it's a weird deal. But I have to say, the answer to your question is the number one best way to find a good contractor is through a referral from a friend who's used them before. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And nothing Which, beats a referral. Yeah. Absolutely. Perfect. All right. So we now know how to get uh, a contractor. We find a referral or we, we start, uh, you know, running around the Home Depot parking lot until they chase us off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what... What do I look for in a property? You know, forget forget Tom's te you know Tom's technique. Let's talk. You know, the okay. average guy who's trying to do, you know, a, a cosmetic. You know, do a nice simple rehab. That you know, their first deal. They're trying to get in and and, and get something uh, started. What should I look for? Oh you know, man, this is an easy one. This is an easy one. Easy one. Easy one, yeah. baby. Okay, right. you got to pick the right house. It's everything. It's picking the right house and buying it for the right price. Because yeah. once you accomplish those two steps, the rest really can fall into place. Sure. If you blow it on those two, it doesn't matter what you do from there on out, you're going to be going uphill. Yep. So <clears throat> that right house, I look at a lot of weird things. You know, I was with a friend the other day and we pulled up to go look at a property. And he said, it's that one, it's that one right there. And I said, I know which one it is. I'm not looking at that one, I'm looking at what's around it. Yeah. Okay, you look at the house next door, who's on the left, who's on the right, who's across the street. Right. Those are things you won't be able to change with paint or right. landscaping. Yep. And so a retail buyer is going to be real concerned with that. So I look at the houses next door. Um, I look at whether the house is on a hard corner or not. No one wants to really live on a busy corner right. or a busy street. Um, those are huge things. And I look at the curb appeal for the house. Does it have character? You can add curb appeal, but yep. you can't add character right. necessarily easily. And so I, lo I look at the bones of the house and see, does it have a good floor plan? Will it work? And I start um, you know, thinking in my mind as I walk through it, which walls can I possibly open up to give it a more functional modern floor plan if it doesn't? Or yeah. is there a way to add more closet space by moving some stuff around or to make a bathroom larger? 
or sometimes in these 50s ranch houses, they might be a three bedroom, two bath, but there's no real master suite because right. of both bathrooms might be in a hallway. Right. So I figure out, is one of the bathroom walls attached to the biggest bedroom where I could actually turn it into a proper master suite? Gotcha. So there's a variety of things like that. But number one is sort of before you even get in the house is look at what's around it. Yeah. That's really important and that's things you, those are things you can't change. Okay. And then uh, formula. <laughs> what, you know, is there, is there, you know, everybody talks about ARV and, and, and price numbers. What, you know, why don't, why don't you, as, as an experienced rehabber, tell us, you know, what am I looking for? What kind of numbers, what kind of margins am, am, I, am I trying to get here? Okay, yeah. So it's funny these days is I don't think about um, the ARV numbers and all that. When I drive to properties, I know my comps, though. Yeah. So before I go and look at a property and waste time to go and look at it, I run the numbers on the recent solds in the area. Um, and I look at those souls real carefully. Here in California, it's a volatile market, so there's a lot of distressed properties that are selling, whether they be short sales or foreclosures. Sure. Um, when I'm analyzing my sold comps here, I don't necessarily consider those. I only look at the retail sales for the, the traditional sales. Right. So before I even arrive, I know the numbers and I know pretty much what I'd have to get the house at to make the numbers work. Right. And the numbers working for me um, at this point, um, I try to pretty much build in a $200,000 spread. Okay. That's what I call a spread. Sure. It's not an ARV deal. But um, in San Antonio, I was buying in the 150 price range. Sure. And those are little bungalows for 150 grand. Right. But I knew if I added a master suite on the back and turned it into a 3.2, then it would sell in the 350 range. Right. So there's that $200,000 spread. Gotcha. And off the cuff, rough numbers, I know I can build for $65 a square foot. Right. And when I say build, that means um, a full gut remodel, so tearing the whole house down to the studs, oh, okay. placing all the mechanicals, the foundation, the roof, electrical, plumbing, central air, landscaping, pour concrete. I spend about $65 a square foot on doing that. Gotcha. Um, so so if, if, if I'm looking at a $200,000 spread and knowing I could do all that for just say under a hundred, yeah. and I know I'd have such a good profit there, yeah. I wouldn't really have to spend too much time on figuring out, um, you know, fine tooth combing the budget because right. I've done it before and I've been down the road but right. for people getting started I think that that rule the 70% ARV minus repairs that works good yeah. in, in a volatile market maybe you want to be more conserved in that I know most investors won't touch a deal unless they net 20% profit right. and that's pretty much where we're at yeah. if I want to make less than 20% on my money I probably won't go into the deal okay. unless it's an easy like a wholesale deal or something where you don't really have much of your money tied up yeah. in, or if you're in and out in a week, whatever. Yeah, gotcha. Um, you know, we're starting to get run out of time a little bit, so I'm going to start slapping questions at you really quick. Okay, quickly. okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I can sit here and talk. I mean, we can get into depth forever, but yeah, I know we'll you... be here for you know, which is good. We'll we'll do another interview one day, and we'll we'll start covering more stuff. You know, it's all yeah. good. Um, average turnaround time you know, from from you find a deal to you purchase it, you flip it, you're out of it. Four to five months. Four to five months. We, we, we've only really been doing two to three of these big rehabs a year. Okay. So four to five months. And we try to overstack them a little bit so when we finish one, we go into the next. Yep. Because I'm project managing and on site throughout the whole process, gotcha. and generally doing some of the painting and the tile and a lot of the stuff myself, yeah. we don't concurrently work on two houses. Gotcha. All right. What was the biggest disaster you've ever had as an investor? I got to tell you, um, probably one house that we did in San Antonio where we made about 2000 bucks. Mm -hmm. Never lost money on a real estate deal and um, never really had a huge disaster. We faced a lot of challenges. Yeah. It's not all easy out there. Yeah. But um, yeah, I really don't have a horror story for, no for you. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. We should all follow Tom Tarrant. The, the, <laughs> Here's an easy one. Here's an easy one. I was doing like a rehab and um, there was a vacant house across the street and all the neighbors, of course, I said, what's up with that house? What's up with that house? Yeah. You know, The number one sign I saw was the weeds and the, and the AC units hanging out of the window. Yeah. Oh, that's this old guy. He lives in Montana. He'll never sell it. Right. He's giving it to his kid. Don't, don't contact him. Don't bother contacting sure. him. So I call him up, work a deal. Within two weeks, had it under contract and then I flipped it to a local wholesaler and made 30 grand off of it with literally pulling up the carpets to show someone there was hardwood floors. So that was probably the easiest money we ever made. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> don't call him, man. Don't call him, really. You don't want to call him. <laughs> don't call him because if he is going to sell it, he already promised he'd sell it to me. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And so they were all so pissed when I got the house. They are like, what? How'd you get it? <laughs> no, 
no fear, guys. You got to be out there. You got to be yeah. doing it. If you don't try, it's not going to happen, right? Yeah, yeah. No, really, it is. And it's, part of it's just getting your feet wet and just jumping off the cliff, you know, and doing yeah. it. Absolutely. All right. So that was, we got no bad deals. You're like the Teflon Don, you know, <laughs> you got deals falling in your lap. Um, tell us, I don't know. I mean, you know, what was, I guess, what your most gratifying project that you've done so far? I tell you, these old houses that we're doing, um, you know, built in the 1900s, landmarks yeah. and stuff that really people from the neighborhood love and love to see you do. It's so gratifying to go in and turn the thing around and um, watch all the neighbors get excited and they paint their houses and you leave a block a much better place. Yeah. And it's just really gratifying, you know, and like they always say, do what you love and the money will follow. Well, yeah. I'm born to create. Yeah. So, so, so what happens, the money and, and whatever, the, the notoriety, it, it's all a byproduct. Really, yeah. it really is, you know, and uh, we just love the old houses. No, that's great. Now, yeah. let me ask you something because this is something that I've, I know there's a lot of this. And I'm just curious about your opinion on, on, on the subject. There are a lot of rehabbers who, you know, literally slap lipstick on a pig. I mean, they literally, you know, you'll have, um, fa you know, fascia and soffits that are rotting, falling apart, and they'll repaint it, cover it up just so it lasts long enough to get the next guy in there. And personally, I think, I think that's horrible for the business. I think in terms of reputation, it's it's a fast way to destroy one. Um, what, what what's your take on it, man? You know you're right. It's it's funny. Everything has to be done on a budget though, so I right. can see both sides. Yeah. And um, you know I think that's part of what pushed us to doing only full gut remodels. Yeah. So I would have a real difficult time at this stage after completely redoing these beautiful homes. Right. To now go in and have to patch. And, and putty and duct tape, you know, yeah. stuff, you know, it, it's really difficult, but there's a budget for every house. Sure. So it, it's not to say that, um, you know, you can only replace what's within the budget. Sure. And it's not necessarily doing someone a disservice because, you know, homes are old and right. uh, they have a shelf life. Right. And so there are things that are going to deteriorate and it doesn't mean you have to rebuild the whole house. Right. So I see the other side, Josh, but yeah. no, man, I'm totally with you. There's guys actually in San Antonio that were on television yeah. and I personally visited some of their projects. Yeah. It looked great on TV. And um, I've got to tell you, those guys had such a bad reputation and just really burned bridges. And, yeah. and to sell people that kind of stuff and, and that poor workmanship, yeah. to me, it's a bad investment right. because I'm going to get out of it what I put into it. So right. I want to only do things right and, and do a really nice deal, you know? That's great. That's yeah. great. Well, listen, it's been... It's been an absolute ple pleasure, man. I think, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know how much people are going to actually learn from this, but I, but I think, you know, it's it's great to see somebody like you doing what you're doing. Um, I think it's exciting to know that there are people like you that are that are really focused on quality, turning around neighborhoods, you know, really trying to improve the lives of other people while trying to make some money. Um, yeah. And and that's a beautiful thing. I think. Um, I think you're you're you know, really are one of these model investors, I mean, that people should look up to, you know, not only for this, you know, the, 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 the actual construction and project, but also like we talked about with the web stuff and the, being social and being out there and helping other people. So I, I, I commend you, man. I think you're doing great stuff. Oh man. Thanks a lot, Josh. That means a lot to me. You know, um, like I had said in the early days, we got most of our education from reading books and online. Yeah. And you know, I get a lot of people calling me and they want to know, hey, how'd you get started? Yeah. And can you help me? I was on the phone with a lady yesterday for an hour. I don't even know this lady. Yeah. I'm constantly helping people and reaching out. And um, so if anyone has any questions or, or wants to pick my brain, I always give people the time, you know, and it's 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 not it's not beyond me to get on the phone with someone and sort of just spill it out. All right, Tom. Well, you know, couple couple technical glitches we've had there. There's you know, there's little we can do until they've perfected this technology of uh, of video uh, conferencing calls. We'll we'll have to deal with what we got. But uh, again, listen, man, it's it's been a, a great pleasure uh, for anybody who's who's watching. In case you you didn't get it the first seven or ten times that I mention it, Tom Tarrant uh, from TomTarrant.com. And uh, on Bigger Pockets again, it's biggerpockets.com slash users slash Tom underscore Tarrant. And um, what about Twitter, Facebook? I don't know if you want to share that or. or yeah, uh, Facebook is forward slash Tom Tarrant dot com, okay. D O T com. And Twitter is forward slash Tom Tarrant. 
Awesome. All right, Tom, man. Well, listen, again, it's it's been a great pleasure. Uh, hopefully we can talk again and, and maybe get a little deeper into some of these uh, these topics. Um, yeah, I got, I got a lot to share, Josh, and I want to thank you, too, for um, – you know all the info that you put out there for everybody to take advantage of. Um, it's a great resource, and um, I encourage everybody to just spend hours and hours reading Josh's site, stuff online. It's how we learned everything we learned, and um, it's all out there. You just got to go and read it, educate yourself, and you can do this. It's, it's, it's obtainable. Awesome. All right, Tom. Take care. Okay, buddy. See you later, Thanks. Josh.